Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena Games video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck and the standard bannings are finally in effect, so Fires of Invention and Agent of Treachery are banned and the companion mechanic has been changed. And today's deck, as voted on by my patrons, is built around Escape Protocol, a 2-mana enchantment saying whenever we cycle a card, we can pay 1 mana and when we do, exile target artifact or creature we control and return it to the battlefield. So we get to flicker an artifact or creature essentially. Now the problem with building around Escape Protocol is that none of the other cycling cards that you would typically play really have synergy with Escape Protocol. There's no amazing enter the battlefield abilities that we can abuse with this, so we have to look for additional cards to combine with all the cycling cards and that's where Augur Bolas comes in handy as a 2 mana 1-3 Merfolk Wizard and when Augur enters the battlefield we can look at the top 3 cards of our library, reveal an instant or sorcery card from among them and put it into our hand and the rest goes on the bottom. So Augur of Bolas is a nice cheap creature that we can potentially flicker multiple times with the escape protocol finding more instants and sorceries and all the cards in this deck besides the escape protocol and a couple creatures are going to be instants and sorceries with cycling synergies so we can make a pile here of all the cycling cards in the deck. We've got a total of 20 1 mana cyclers and then 4 2 mana cyclers. So all these we can find with Agrobolas as well as our payoff here, Zenith Flare. This is a card that's going to help us stay alive by dealing damage and gaining life and eventually can help us close out the game. And this is a bit more of a control deck than your typical Boros cycling decks. So we also have 4 copies of Shatter the Sky as our sweeper of choice. So this gives you kind of an idea of what the deck is trying to do. So we've got our two copies of Escape Protocol, or four copies of Argor Bolas that we can start flickering in the late game, finding more of our cyclers, removal spells, or payoff cards. And then we also have two copies of Scholar of the Ages, which is kind of the late game of this deck, especially powerful combined with Escape Protocol, as a 7 mana 3-3 three, three human wizard, and when Scholar enters the battlefield we can return up to two target instant and or sorcery cards from our graveyard to our hand, so we can return multiple copies of Zenith Flare or various sweepers like Shatter the Sky or find more cyclers and then when we start flickering the Scholar of the Ages with Escape Protocol we will really start pulling ahead and uh, make it very difficult for the opponent to come back and then taking a look at the rest of the deck of course we've got a lot of cycling cards startling development we're mostly gonna cycle but we can also target Augur every now and then to turn it into a 4-4 go for Bloods so we're not gonna cast all that often and then we've got Wilts, which is the only 2-mana cycler in the deck. And as you'll notice, in the mana base we've got a swamp, a mountain and a forest that we can all fetch up with our Fabled Passage. So we can actually cast some of these off-color cycling cards, including Wilt, which is pretty well positioned, I think, after all the bannings, since we will see a resurgence in some of the Sacrifice decks, where it can kill Witches Oven and Trail of Crumbs. It can deal with Lucky Clover out of the Teamer Adventure deck. It can deal with Annex or Ember Cleave out of the Mono Red decks. And of course Wilderness Reclamation out of the Teamer Reclamation decks is probably the biggest one. And then we've got Memory Leak as another one mana cycler that we can also hard cast every now and then if we fetch up our Swamp. We've got Frostvale Ambush which is mostly getting cycled. And four copies of Boon of the Wishgiver which is also mostly getting cycled but every now and then we might cast it for six mana to draw four. And then of course as we mentioned Zenith Flare, this is the reason why we're playing all these cycling cards is so we can fill the graveyard to power up our Zenith Flare to deal X damage to any target and we gain X life where X is the number of cards with cycling in our graveyard. And then we can also get it back later with our Scholar of the Ages to make sure we can end the game in a timely fashion. And then four copies of Shatter the Sky since we are a much more controlling deck than your typical red-white cycling decks that are much more aggressive. And then taking a look at our mana base, we've got three basic planes, two islands, one swamp, one mountain, one forest that we can fetch up with our Fabled Passage, and then four of the Jeskai Color Triomes, as well as four Hallowed Fountain. Now we could easily swap Shatter the Sky with Storm's Wrath if we think Planeswalkers are a bigger problem, since this deck is pretty soft to Narset especially, so we could easily swap some planes for mountains and then swap Hallowed Fountain for Steam Vents and make it easier to cast our Storm's Wrath if we think it's going to be better than Shatter the Sky. So the deck is pretty customizable when it comes to which sweeper we want to play. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Fine hand. Facing a Lurus deck. Alright. 
So still a sacrifice deck here. So we'll see how effective Lurus is with the new change. Black-white sacrifice. Cruel celebrants. So definitely looking for Shatter the Sky here with Angra Bolas. I'll take a Zenith Flare. Next turn we can start cycling. I've got the escape protocol to combine with Augur, although it's gonna be a while before we play it. No attacks, opponent could have hit us for one. Yeah, let's cycle main phase. I guess I could keep up startling development in case they attack. Alright, fine. I'll play this. And then just pass a turn. Only get to cycle twice, whereas if I cycle main phase and hit an untap plan, I could potentially cycle three times, but that's okay. Opponent puts lures in their hands, gets in for one, sure. I'll take one damage. I wouldn't mind hitting my land drop, so I'll cycle before fetching. That also helps me know what color I need to fetch in case I pick up a wilt to maybe destroy a witch's oven. And I think I will get green here. Alright, shatter is pretty good. I think I just play shatter now. We're down to 11, but Zenith Flare can answer Lurus. And we've got Augur plus Escape Protocol as a nice late game. Alright, Call of the Death Dweller gets back Celebrant and Scorpion, so... Probably want to play Augur as another blocker, although I guess it doesn't block Menace or Death Touch all that well. So maybe I'm better off just Zenith Flaring the Cruel Celebrant as soon as possible. In which case we'll just cycle and Zenith Flare. So if we hit land number 6, I can play Augur, play Protocol, Cycle, and pay the 1 extra mana. So that would be a pretty good turn. So tap land instead. Do I still want to play Augur? I think we'd rather start by Cycling here. In case we hit another Shatter. Alright, another Flare will do. So we'll just kill Lurus now. And then next turn we can make the play I described of Augur, Protocol, and then Cycle. Could also wait and then try and block with Augur to prevent one damage. Although that could be bad in the face of instant speed removal. Opponent's also playing the enchantment package with Hateful Eidolon. Could have kept up green in case we find a wilt here to kill the Eidolon, but don't think it's a priority right now. I'll still take it, because it can help me deal with the Witch's Oven, which could be annoying. And I guess we'll pass and then uh, try and use the Augur as a blocker as well. Omen of the Dead can get back Lurus. And Kaya's Ghost Form can also be wilted, potentially. Second so block and then Flicker Augur.
All right, Scholar of the Ages can get back a whole bunch of stuff from the graveyard, including Zenith Flare and Shatter the Sky. So that seems pretty good. Now I could wait until I have nine mana to play Scholar and have the option of flickering it in response to removal. Don't know if we can afford to wait. Could also get back double Zenith Flare. Um, yeah, I think I'm down to just play Scholar here. And go for Zenith Flare plus Shatter. And then next turn I could Wilt destroying the Kaya's Ghost form. And maybe cast Shatter or just Zenith Flare the Lures. Alright, what do I want to do here? Yeah, I guess I'll make these blocks. So Lurus comes back. Opponent draws a card from Eidolon. That waits their own Scorpion to draw another card with Eidolon. Alright, so... Seems like a good turn for Shatter. Don't think I bother killing the Omen of the Dead here with Wilts. But I will cycle main phase to maybe hit my land drop. And then we're just looking for another Agora Bolas or Scholar of the Ages. Omen gets back Lurus once again. Alright. So if they play Lurus and then put Kaya's Ghost Form on it, I can just kill the Ghost Form and then Zenith Flare him. It would be nice to exile Lurus with a memory leak so they can keep looping it back. Goes for Scorpion instead of Kaya's Ghost Form, fair enough. Not a Shatter the Sky, sure. Think I'll just pass with Zenith Flare up this time. We'll Zenith Flare Idol on my response. Could have also Wilted Idol on. But that seems fine. And then just cast Boon here. Pass a turn. And then hoping to eventually find more Zenith Flares and. The last color. We will need to be pretty careful with how we protect the last color of the ages so we can keep looping back Zenith Flares. I guess we can afford to cycle one boon and a wilt. Alright, there's Zenith Flare for 11. Can take a look with Memory Leak. And Memory Leak can exile Lurus. Double command the Dread Horde, wow. That's unexpected. That could be pretty bad for me. Do I try and take both commands here? I mean, I can only take one right now, so if they draw lands... We could be in trouble. But I guess it's maybe better than trying to exile Lurus here. So I wouldn't be able to Memory Leak again this turn. So I guess I'll just Boon then. And discard some lands. Alright, there's land 6, so they get to Command the Dreadhordes. 
and they've got a lot of life to work with. Although I can just shatter the sky to clear the board next turn and Zenith Flare to gain a bit of life back. Scholar gets back Commander Dreadhorde. And Call of the Death Dweller. So let's see, my opponent's at 18, so I need to put five more Cyclers in the graveyards. Can I make that happen? It's not impossible. I guess I'll start by playing Augur, because we might just find another Zenith Flare. That's a miss. So I'll cycle the Wilts. Flicker Augur, but then I won't have the mana to flare twice. So do I just Shatter and Zenith Flare anyway? I think I still start here. Ah, there's Flare. So I can Flare for a bunch to just stay alive this turn, and then next turn Flare again for lethal, hopefully. Should be able to survive this attack. Opponent's gaining 5, 6, 7. So yeah, I think we just pass, and then we should be okay. Goes from Lurus, that's fine. I can even block Lurus and then cycle the boon, flickering auger, so they don't gain the three. And then before damage, I'll Zenith Flare just to be safe. And then another Flare should do it. Mars Grasp their own Lurus. Draw some cards, trigger Celebrants. Not sure what they can draw here. Grab the Scorpion, gain some more life. But I don't think they're going all the way up to 15 here. Another Cruel Celebrants. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we're facing an Obosh deck, so... Probably a flavor of aggro, and yeah, this sounds okay. I've got Shatter the Sky, which is probably one of the more important cards. Not sure yet what to fetch with Fabled Passage, so I'll just wait for now and... Cycle Developments to run Score Spitter. Maybe I'll cast a go for blood actually. Augur Bolas could maybe fight a small creature. So probably gonna end up fetching either white or blue here, so we'll postpone that decision once again. Cycle memory leak and developments. Memory leak also now gets a lot better with companions going into the opponent's hands if they pay the three mana, so we can still potentially take him away before they hit the battlefields. Triple one drop start from our opponents. They can be playing Cavalcade of Calamity at least with a Bosch as companion. Uh, 
Um, probably cycle memory leak at this point. Alright, so I can play Augur Bolas as a nice 1 3 blocker. Find Shatter. I mean, I wouldn't mind another Shatter, but letting the opponent know that there's Shatter incoming could be bad. So maybe I'll still take the cycling card here. It's gonna be Heraldic Banner, which I can potentially wilt if I fetch a Forests. I'll take two. Can also draw the forests. So maybe I don't need to shatter quite yet, and I can just kill the banner. And I also have the option of fighting one of their creatures. Maybe that's unnecessary if I'm gonna end up shattering. Alright, Annex. So if I shatter now, they will be left with a whole bunch of tokens afterwards, which is annoying. So if I had another wilt, I could take out Annex first. So if I shatter, they get two, three, four, five tokens, and with Castle... I would basically be dead, so that doesn't seem great. So I need to find a Zenith Flare to deal with Annex first, or another Wilt here. So let's play Augur, keeping up green mana. Alright, there's Wilt, perfect. And probably just play this tapped. And then I'm prepared to shatter the sky next turn. Our opponent hasn't paid the mana yet to put a companion in their hand, so we don't need to fear a 5 mana Bosch quite yet, even though it wouldn't be that bad for us, since it doesn't add a lot of damage to the board and we can clean it up with our shatter the sky. It's gonna be another fervent champion instead. And a Bosch goes to hands. Alright, I guess we'll attack with Augurs since we're gonna wipe the board. And get our basic swamp for memory leak purposes. Alright, haven't hit a Zenith Flare yet, that's definitely the card we're looking for the most at this point to help us survive. Alright, looks like our opponent may have given up here. We'll just cast Boon, draw 4, and then maybe find a Zenith Flare that way. Still no Zenith Flares, but plenty of memory leaks to take a peek at the opponent's hand. Alright, there's a Bosch. So won't be able to take that away with Memory Leak. Don't mind casting Shatter here to avoid dying to a bunch of burn spells. So I can Memory Leak plus Shatter. Light up the stage, Shock Bone Crusher. Take a Bone Crusher, I think. And then we'll shatter the sky. I 
And then we've got a very full graveyard for a potential Zenith Flare. The land of the stage finds Banner and another Shock. So everything is ready for Zenith Flare here. Let's see if we can find it with Augur. There it is for 12. So that should be pretty much game over with the Scholar next turn too. And our point explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Fine opening hands. Could fetch a swamp to get access to memory leak. Turn to Angor Bolas. Facing our Boreal Grazer. If this is a mutate ramp deck, then Shatter's gonna be quite good. If it's a more Planeswalker heavy build, that could be an issue. Second Grazer, no third lands, so just an O3 here. So that also can indicate some mutate synergies. Could also get the second planes, but we have way more white sources than swamps we could draw. Now I will probably cycle twice over playing Augur since I just want to hit my land drops. Opponent does nothing, still stuck on two, probably holding a bunch of migratory great horns is my guess. Well, I could have a look with Memory Leak, I suppose. Alright, so it is indeed the Mutate deck. No cheap Mutators, so they kept a pretty greedy one. Probably take Sterix. Could also go for Iluna. I'll go with Sterix. There's Zenith Flare, so I could fetch my Mountain. Probably not gonna need access to green mana for Wilt in this matchup. I don't mind if they mutate the Shore Shark, so I don't need to Shatter the Sky right now. So I guess I can afford to Augur Bolas. Find another Leak, can maybe take the second Sterix. It's gonna be a Parcel Beast mutated, sure. Does not find a land. Wouldn't mind hitting my land drop here, but I also want to take away their uh, Sterics again. So do I risk cycling again for one mana? I think I do. Uh, no land, sadly. So they just play protocol now. Fine. At this point, I can just double Zenith Flare them to death. So I could also just keep cycling and ignore the escape protocol. Triple Zenith Flare should definitely do it. I guess I'll just pass then.
also have the option of blocking and then flickering auger and then just casting shatter next turn instead of uh, flaring face which might be safer All four flares in hand. I guess we'll cycle another one. Just one hit land drops at this point. Where's my lands at? I guess I can cycle without paying the mana for protocol, hoping for lands. Could just chatter. Discard a couple cyclers to hand size and then get them with double zenith flare. Sure. So now zenith flare for eleven. So I can cast two of those. Gem Razor can destroy my escape protocol, but I no longer need it. Second so Cycle and Zenith Flare. Alright, so we managed to beat the blue-green mutate deck, although our opponent did keep a pretty slow hand. But uh, yeah, got to see our escape protocol in action, drew us a lot of extra cards combined with Augur Bolas, and the 1-3 body of Augur Bolas was also surprisingly effective against the aggressive decks, bought us a lot of extra time, and then helped us find the lethal zenith flare in the end. So the deck definitely performed above expectation, also saw the value of being able to actually cast some of those off-color cyclers like Wilt and Memory Leak. So this is a pretty fun deck if you want to try a more controlling build of the cycling deck that's typically more red-white aggro. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.